Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Commander Insight where we give you deck techs and uh, strategies and give you the insight on what uh, how to play uh, Magic a little bit differently, Commander a little bit better. And uh, what I wanted to do today was go over a uh, car favorite card of mine in the entire game of Magic that I don't really see too much play in Commander. And that's the card in front of you now, it's Phyrexian Obliterator. So for those who don't know, have never seen this card before, um, it used to be really good in Modern. Uh, there was like a mid-range mono black deck in Modern that uh, ran, I think, three or four of these in the in the Modern deck. But you don't see too much of it in Commander. So this is my absolute favorite art in the entire game of Magic. I just love the way this card looks. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I wanted to try and fit it into a deck. And uh, it's a little uh, tough to run in a deck. You know, you have to kind of build around a little bit. It's a singleton format, so you're only going to have one of them. But... Um, this card was is awesome if you can basically force its effect to go off. So let's go over it real quick. Uh, it does cost four black mana for a 5-5 five, five Trample Horror. Uh, whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So this is a great way to kind of suppress your opponent and actually kind of send them, send them back uh, to the, you know, backwards essentially where... Uh, let's just say, for the, for the sake of the example, your opponent has a 2-2 creature that they swing at you. You have this card out, and you block with it. Uh, the Phyrexian Obliterator will do 5 damage to it, probably kill it. And then uh, that creature, before it dies, will do 2 damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, and then die. But before it happens, then Phyrexian Obliterator's effect will trigger, and your opponent will have to sacrifice 2 permanents, uh, not including the creature that just died. So... Uh, how do we break this card? I don't, like I said, I don't see it in Commander a lot, and it's mainly because really what this card does, if you play it, is your opponents either, if you have it on the field, your opponents just won't attack you with anything on the ground. Um, they'll still attack you with flyers and stuff. Or if you attack with this card, uh, they just won't block it. So it's basically a free five damage, uh, worst case scenario. So that's not great. Um, I like to hold it up and keep it as a blocker. But uh, what if we could force its effect? What if we could get uh, our opponents to somehow do damage to it? What, um, then we could essentially kind of trick them into doing it, and then we can make them sacrifice permanent. So that's kind of what I wanted to go over today. This is a little, like, fun little uh, interactions and strategies that I use to bring out <clears throat> and use Phyrexian Obliterator at its best. Um, I put this in a Marin deck, Marin of Clan Nel Toth. Um, it's a Golgari deck, so we're going to be kind of dealing with black and green colors here. Um, there are other, obviously other colors that this could run well with. I'm thinking maybe a Rakdos deck uh, with the red. Um, but let's kind of get into it. So the biggest thing on the, let's just say if it's on the field, like I said, when you have this card on the field, first of all, you have to have the colors for it. So you have to cast it for four black unless you're reanimating it somehow. Um, but if it's on the field, it's just going to be a, you know, a blocker. No one's going to attack you. But what we can do is we can actually run another card and force your opponent to essentially attack it. And we're gonna do that with a card called Uvenweld Tracker. So if you've never seen this card before, it's a one green mana for a one one human shaman, and it has pay a one and a, a green and a colorless and tap it. Target creature you control fights another target creature. So if you're not familiar with the fight mechanic, it is uh, kind of green's way of doing uh, creature targeted removal. So obviously the color green, the, the, the philosophy is uh, you want to be the better creature by basically being uh, in nature, the bigger, the stronger, the faster. Um, so fighting is kind of what they do. So the way fighting works is you have two creatures that basically do damage to each other based on their power equal, you know, power to each other. So it's not technically uh, in the combat phase. So there's certain uh, combat things that don't work like uh, first strike, double strike, things like that. But lifelink, death touch, those will work. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to essentially use this effect to tap and you're gonna make your Phyrexian Obliterator fight uh, one of your opponent's creatures, probably the biggest one. Uh, if you can do it so that Phyrexian Obliterator doesn't die, that might be the best case scenario. But again, we're in a Marin deck, so it's okay if, uh, if it dies because you can always reanimate it. But So uh, the problem with this is that when it comes out, it doesn't have haste, it has summoning sickness, so you can't do it this turn. So it's kind of gonna be telegraphed a little bit but uh, unless they can do something to destroy this, you have these two cards out, your opponents are going to be terrified because all you have to do is basically have Uvenwell Tracker lose its summoning sickness, you know, untap in the upkeep, in your upkeep, and you can essentially do this at instant speed at any time. So you don't have to do it during your turn. So if you wanted to, you could swing for five, uh, five uh, damage. Your opponent's probably not going to block because if they block, they're just going to be sacrificing more stuff. And then let's say, uh, you know, they're going to attack you. And because now that your Phyrexian Obliterator is tapped, well, you can leave up two green mana. You can tap 
Uvenwald Tracker, have target creature you control fight target creature your opponents control. That can be a flyer as well. Just because of, uh, something has flying doesn't mean that it, they can't fight each other. So what's really cool, um, like I said, so Frexion Obliter Obliterator will deal five damage to their creature. Their creature will do their power to Frexion Obliterator, and then the, the damage goes through. It's possible Frexion will die, but even if it dies, its other effect will still trigger. So if you want to target the highest powered creature, you're going to uh, ensure that your opponent has to sacrifice the most amount of permanents. Um, so this is an amazing effect, these two cards here, uh, and especially in a Marin deck where you can basically bring back one or the other. So um, Uvenwell Tracker is really good e for anything, even like creatures with Death Touch. If you bring out tokens like 1-1, one, one, you know, there's a card called Ophiomancer and it makes 1-1 one, one snakes with Death Touch, and you just keep flinging them at your opponent. Basically, you make this 1-1 uh, one, one Death Touch snake fight your biggest uh, opponent's creature. Um, it'll kill it every time because of Death Touch. But um, So this is kind of like Green's targeted removal for creatures. Um, but anyway, so... Uh, if that doesn't make sense, what, we're, what we want to talk about is, okay, how do we get these cards out? How can we kind of cheat them out or bring them out so that there's a surprise for your opponent? Because obviously right now, if you just cast a Frexion Obliterator one turn, then you cast a Uvenwell Tracker, they're going to see it coming. So what can we do to essentially make sure that uh, your opponent swing? What we want to do is have them swing in and then have you basically bring out a Frexion Obliterator at instant speed and then block with it. That's one way we can do it if you're not going to go this route. So, uh, you know, back to um, just having a Frexian Obliterator. Let's say that uh, you somehow get your Frexian Obliterator in the graveyard. So this is the graveyard for now. Let's just assume that. I'll put this card under here. So these two are in the graveyard. Uh, one card we can use <clears throat> is a card called Doomed Necromancer. This is probably the most uh, telegraphed card, meaning your opponents will also see this coming. But it is a great way to kind of uh, do it and do it at instant speed. So as long as this has been out of turn, let's pretend like it doesn't have summoning sickness. Uh, you pay a black, you tap this, and you sacrifice Doom Necromancer, and you can return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you can basically, you know, let's say your opponent swings in at you, uh, you can basically pay the black, sacrifice this, bring out your Frexion Obliterator at instant speed, and then block with it. So that's one way. Um, obviously, they're probably not going to attack you if you have this set up because they can tell. They'll know that you have, you know, the common knowledge or, or public knowledge will be that you have this on the field, obviously. You have, they'll see that you have mana up and they see that you have this in the graveyard. So they may not do that, but it is still, you know, someone might forget. Or in the end step, you can just do it and now you have it out permanently. So uh, that's one way to do it. Probably the least effective way. Uh, another really cool way to do it, which a lot of people forget, is through a card called Necromancy. So Necromancy, most people use it as a way to bring out a creature permanently, um, but they forget that its first effect is actually allowed to be played at instant speed. So um, you can choose to play Necromancy at instant speed, and if you do, you have to bury it at the end step. So essentially, whatever you bring out is going to die in the end step, but you can play it at instant speed. So you can play it during your opponent's turn. So, you know, let's say you have three mana up and they attack you. They swing at you with their big 5-5 five five commander. Uh, you're going to cast this at instant speed, you're going to bring out the Phyrexian Obliterator, and you're going to block. And then they're going to sacrifice X amount of creatures. You're probably going to have your Phyrexian Obliterator die just from blocking anyways from combat damage. Worst case, if it doesn't, it will get killed when Necromancy dies. So that's another way to do it. Is uh, here's two. Of the, those are two of the cards that you can use. Um, another really good one, uh, which I like to use, is Protean Hulk. So obviously we all know Protean Hulk is a broken card. It was on the ban list. It came off. I run it in Marin. If you have a sack outlet that you can can't do at instant speed, you can have a Protean Hulk out. Your opponents have no idea what's in your deck. So basically a Frexian Obliterator and Uvenwell Tracker are in your deck. And actually Uvenwell doesn't even need to be in the deck for this, but um, it's nice to have it out. So you can essentially have a Protean Hulk out, sacrifice it at instant speed. What Protean Hulk says that when it dies, you can search your deck for creature cards that equate to six CMC and bring them out on the battlefield. So this is four, this is one. So you can do this plus another one. I like to bring out Dryad Arbor because it's a free zero. Um, but so this costs basically five of the six you can use. You just bring these out on the field. So you can bring them out and block with Frexion Obliterator or in the end step, let's say it's your opponent's end step, you can sacrifice this, bring them out in the end step so that Uvenwell Tracker comes out and now it's untapping in your your uh, upkeep and now you can do it immediately and then basically make your opponent sacrifice creatures as well so that's one another really good way and pretty easy way to do because you know if you're running a Golgari, Gol Golgari deck you can essentially uh, bring out the Protean Hawk pretty easily another card that can kind of cheat it out uh, which they don't really see coming is Elvish Piper so that's where Phyrexian Obliterator is going to be in your hand 
Um, again, it needs to have it needs to be able to tap, so it can't do it the turn it comes out. Um, but again, it's four mana, so you can bring it out with a Protein Hulk. So if Protein Hulk's on the field, uh, you can sacrifice it, bring out your Elvish Piper and your Uvenwald Tracker, and uh, you know your upkeep hits. Now they both are untapped and can do whatever they, whatever shenanigans you need to, um, for the sake of this this example. But you pay a green and tap it. You bring out your Frexian Obliterator and you block, or you bring it out when you have this. And now during your turn, you swing and make them fight. So there's just a lot of really cool interactions with green cards that allow that that to happen and allow you to cheat out the Frexian Obliterator so that your opponent can't see it coming. Um, and then the last card, which uh, also works, is called Wake of the Dead. Um, and this card has to be cast during your opponent's turn. Uh, you pay black, black, and X. And so whatever you put into X, uh, you basically get to return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then they get sacrificed at the end of the turn. Um, so, you know, let's say you don't have a field at all. You got where you need at least three mana up, but let's say this is your graveyard. Uh, you have nothing up. Your opponents swing in thinking that they could just swing at you for free. You cast this at instant speed where X equals one. It's just, even if it's more than one, that's great, but at least one, you trigger and then bring out the Phyrexian Obliterator. You block their biggest creature. The other damage will go through. So obviously if it's gonna kill you, that won't do anything. But uh, if, let's say you survive, they still have to sacrifice everything, uh, that the amount of damage that they do to Phyrexian Obliterator. And then Phyrexian Obliterator will either stay on the board until the end step or it'll die in that combat step. So. Those are some interactions uh, as a way to bring it out. I've done this on multiple times because they don't see it coming. You know, if, you, if it's in the graveyard, they don't know that you have a Wake of the Dead. If it's in your hand, they don't know that you have it in your hand, an Elvish Piper. They'll be threatened by Elvish Piper, but they won't be expecting a Phyrexian Obliterator. They, don't, they won't know, so they might be fearful to attack into you. Um, a Protein Hulk, you bring it from the deck. So really the only one that they can absolutely telegraph is going to be the, uh, the Doomed Necromancer, which I don't really run, but it's just an option if you wanted to. So now let's go into a couple combos just that'll make this deck even better. Um, how about if you have a Terror Grid on the field? What happens then? <clears throat> so what Terror Grid said is, says is whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent, you may put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So, um, so let's get rid of this real quick. So you have a Terror Grid out, and you basically have a way to cheat out a Phyrexian Obliterator at instant speed. You block with your uh, with your Phyrexian Obliterator. Your opponent has to sacrifice X amount of permanents. They're all going to come to your side of the field. Um, this is an amazing combination, and it can swing games. Now, um, you can, you know, all the cards that I just basically brought out, you can use to either bring back um, essentially a Terror Grid or Phyrexian Obliterator. So all these can bring them out. So Protein Hulk dies. You can get your Tegrid and your Uvenweld if you want. You can, uh, you know, use Elvish Piper. You can do Wake of the Dead. Wake of the Dead is probably going to be the best thing. Let's say you do Wake of the Dead for two. You bring both of these out from the graveyard. You're going to block with your Phyrexian Obliterator. It's going to die. Before Tegrid would die, you're going to get all the things that your opponent sacrifice, and then it's going to die in the end step because of Wake of the Dead effect. But still, that's a really, really good effect. The last thing that um, is probably uh, just as good is the new card that just came out in the commander set for the Dungeons and Dragons, Lorcan Warlock Collector. So this is a flying 6-6 devil. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may pay life equal to its mana value, and if you do, put it onto the battlefield under your control, and it's a warlock in addition to its other types. If a warlock you control would die, exile it instead. So basically any time a creature goes to the graveyard from anywhere um, from your opponent, so that's milling it, sacrificing it, having it just die normally, or discarding it, you can basically take that creature under your control. So there's a lot of interactions with this card. Um, I run it in Marin right now, my current Marin deck, but um, one way that you can do it is through Phyrexian Obliterator. So if you don't have a Tegrid out, but you can somehow get this out instead, maybe you mill this off of like a Mesmeric Orb and then you reanimate it, whatever. Um, any of the creatures that your opponent sacrificed, you can now pay the life and get them. So it's a way to basically steal more permanence from your opponent. So you're subtracting cards from their side of the field and you're adding them to your side of the field. So that's why either one of these cards is a huge swing. Um, you know, for example, just like a, a real quick example, my, my buddy runs a Corvold deck. You know, when Corvold sacrifices permanence, he gets um, more and more power. So if these cards are on the field, it's gonna stop him from sacrificing. But let's just say worst case scenario, they're not on the field. Well, you bring out these two, you make Phyrexian Obliterator fight his 2020 Corvold. Yes, he's gonna be sacrificing a lot of permanents, probably Corvold included. He'll have to sacrifice 20 permanents and then your Phyrexian Obliterator will die as well, but that's okay. So at the end of the day, um, Phyrexian Obliterator, it's an awesome card. 
Uh, it is kind of a unique and uh, niche strategy. If you're in an Edict deck, if you're in a Marin deck, if you're in a deck that wants uh, or trying to basically get other opponents to sacrifice things, this is a great way to do it. Um, if you're not, it's just kind of a big 5-5 blocker, which is great. It can be good, but it's really hard to bring out just for the... It's not a great for just being a 5-5 blocker or an unblockable 5-5 with trample because no one's going to block this thing when you attack. So um, that's my thoughts and my, uh, I guess, insight on Phyrexian Obliterator. It's just a card I don't see, and I'd love to see it more often. So I wanted to make this video to kind of give some people ideas to put it in um, reanimator decks, uh, sacrifice decks, whatever it may be. So let me know if you run this card, if you what you've done, maybe some awesome plays you've had with it. If you, see, if you uh, have any card synergies that run that I've missed, uh, let me know. And uh, thanks.